Good morning, folks. We're starting with the New England fireball from last night. About 100 reports across eight states seeing the burning rock entering our atmosphere. The question piling up in my inbox is whether this could be a piece of the coming ice on debris stream from its incoming trajectory into the system. Well, the best answer that any honest person can give you is maybe. This is the time of focus for the incoming trajectory stream. Let me pull her up on NASA's JPL orbital diagram. First thing we need to do is declutter that screen by getting rid of all the extra orbital lines. We will keep ice on and earth on there as that's what we're focused on. Now let me zoom in and swing back all the way around so we're looking into the inner system from Earth's night side. As I tilt the y-axis, you can see that Ison's remnants, whatever is left, is way north and well behind Earth's orbital motion at this moment. But the incoming trajectory is almost perfect. Over a year ago, we said, look to January 14th, 15th, and 16th for that stream, so that would make this fireball about 24 hours early. And still, maybe is my honest answer. Article of the day without a doubt is the weather modification study out of New Zealand on public perception. Shocker, we don't like the idea. What I found most interesting is that they aim to broaden the mechanistic scope of the survey. The masses are less opposed to finding carbon reduction measures than they are to solar reflection via space mirrors or atmospheric aerosols, SRM, and stratospheric spraying. In fact, those were the least well-received ideas. Apparently some measures using vegetation for coal carbon locking was better met, but still a negative reaction to playing God overall. I concur, Guberman. Let's dip below the glassy surface of the West Atlantic to the readings of two buoys in event mode. Normally we'd ignore clear anomalies like this, trust me we'd see a 125 foot wave, but it hit within minutes of a significant earthquake off the northern Puerto Rico coastline. How significant? Well, this area doesn't get eight pointers, but only three other earthquakes have come close to today's quake since 1980. That's 33 years, and what you're seeing on the screen is it. Why do we care? Well, while people are peeing their pants every time the Canary Islands has a little shake, fearing an East Coast tsunami event, I've long held that the North Puerto Rico Trench is the single greatest tsunami threat to the East Coast, and potentially any U.S. coastline except Alaska. You can see the historical landslide marks, and if it goes, the water won't stop until Newfoundland. Frankly, I'm just hoping they're done there. They have had significant volcanic activity this week in Central America, the 5.6 in Guatemala, and a couple other tremors we'd consider above average for the region. Hopefully today was the peak. Let's whip it to the weather and go to Australia and New Zealand. Rain still strong in the north, and we can now conclusively say Cyclone Ian's going to miss New Zealand. Europe? I'd love to get in some weather shares from you guys where the latest storm is cresting onto the continent if anyone would be so kind to give me a check against the Met Office. Not much doing in the US other than a weaker convergence heading east today. Still got those western systems as well. Hello Megaspot. She came, she popped, she morphed, and then she decayed. She's now turning out of sight and taking our magnetic connection to the sun with her. The sunspots on the disc are definitively less impressive. The group I called my horse yesterday indeed spread another two degrees, but did not develop in the center of the umbral boundaries. Incomers not too shabby, but I need another day to diagnose those. Observers will recall last night's news writing off all solar flaring except perhaps that which might result from a filamentary eruption. Indeed, one of the two filaments listed as primary eruption threat let loose just a few hours ago. CME will be moderate, but slow with most going north. Top space weather story though is the solar wind speed. With speed ramping way over 800 km per second, this is a serious coronal hole stream. And we're lucky density is low, or the KP would be way above 4. Without density, the sensitive meters are only reacting moderately, and there is little chance for major storming as the densest parts of the stream have likely passed. But we will keep watch with eyes open. No fear, it's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.